Hello, my name is Isabella Matas and I recently graduated from Middlebury in February 2020, where I studied molecular biology and biochemistry with a minor in German. This interview is part of a series focused on careers in public health and international development and part of the MidVantage programme. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Professor David Torres, Middlebury class of 84. David Torres is a professor of the practice of global health and social entrepreneurship at Middlebury. After graduating from Middlebury, David began a 22 year career in finance, working for JP Morgan Chase and predecessor firm, the Chase Manhattan Bank, in a number of roles in five different countries in Latin America, as well as in New York and in London. While traveling around the world with his family on a sabbatical from JP Morgan in 2005, David worked as a volunteer for Mothers to Mothers in Cape Town for two months. After returning to London, David and his wife together decided that they were moved with their family to Cape Town and that David would join Mothers to Mothers as a permanent staff member. David filmed, filled a number of senior management roles at Mothers to Mothers from 2005 to 2018, helping to take the organization from a base in Cape Town with a budget of $2.5 million to operations in nine different countries and a, with a budget of over $20 million. After 12 years with Mothers to Mothers in Cape Town, David and his family relocated to the US, where David took up his position as Professor of the Practice at Middlebury in January 2019. Thank you very much for joining us today, David. You're very welcome. Thank you, Isabella. It's nice to see you. You too. Um, so you've certainly had a very interesting and dynamic professional journey. And I was wondering if we could start by you please explaining how you came to join Mothers to Mothers after a career in banking, and then maybe give us some background about the organization Mothers to Mothers. Sure. Yeah, it may seem like it's a very varied career and uh, hard to join it all together, going from finance to international health programming to teaching at Middlebury College. But I think the common thread in that journey was that I always wanted to work in some form of international development or international work. I had grown up living in Latin America, uh, leaving the US when I was six years old and not returning until I was 15. And I lived in Puerto Rico and I lived in Brazil and learned Spanish and Portuguese. And when I graduated from Middlebury in 1984 with my degree in international relations, I had assumed that I would go into international development and I was planning for a career in the State Department. Unfortunately, I didn't pass the exam, but fortunately there were other pathways to working overseas at the time I graduated. And one of those was through the banking industry. And so I joined Chase Manhattan and their program, their training program for people to work in Latin America. Um, 22 years is a very long time to work in finance. Um, and I guess about five years before I left, my wife and I were starting to talk about doing a life change. And about that time as well, we all went through 9-11 and I was working in finance in London and we were all very affected by what happened. Um, and at that point we started to say, okay, let's give ourselves five more years, straighten out our lives and then do something completely different. Let's engage in a life of much greater meaning than the life we have. And let's take our family, our children and move something, move somewhere much more interesting. And at that point, um, we didn't know it, but four years later, I was offered an opportunity to take a sabbatical. And as you said, we traveled around the world for a year, and I had an opportunity in Cape Town to work for a few months with Mothers to Mothers. I met the founder of Mothers to Mothers um, through a friend of mine who was working at the U.S. Embassy in Cape Town, and I fell in love. Mothers to Mothers is an organization that had been founded in the year 2000 by an American obstetrician gynecologist who had become an expert in HIV and pregnancy while working in San Diego in the 1990s. And he had ties to South Africa and was asked to come by the Ministry of Health in the Western Cape to help them roll out programs for antiretroviral medication for pregnant women. And so in 2005, they had been up and running for about four years. And the reason he founded 
Mothers to Mothers, his name is uh, Mitch Besser, Dr. Mitch Besser, is in working for the Ministry of Health and trying to roll out antiretroviral medication for pregnant women. He noticed that women were coming to the clinic, being dosed with, diagnosed with HIV, and that they would leave in a complete state of shock and not come back more often than not. And that was for two very important reasons. And the first one is that stigma was huge at that time. And there was a general lack of education and understanding about HIV in South Africa. And the other thing was working as a doctor, um, an American male white doctor in the South African health system, he could not engage with his clients on their level. And this was compounded by the fact that South Africa had at the time and still does today, a huge shortage of healthcare professionals. So in trying to figure out how to better serve the clients he was seeing and diagnosing with their HIV status, he decided that it might make sense to start hiring his clients and training them to be community health workers, to work alongside him and other doctors and nurses in the healthcare system to make sure that when a woman came in for her pregnancy and happened to be diagnosed as HIV positive, she would be introduced to someone who could take her aside and say, sister, I am like you and I have been on your journey and I will help you get through this because HIV does not mean a death sentence for you or your baby. And that was the start of Mothers to Mothers. And Mitch always believed that it was extremely important to pay and to train and professionalize the role of community health worker for mothers to mothers. And he called these employees mentor mothers. He also realized very early on that the problems he saw in Cape Town were problems that existed all over Sub-Saharan Africa and potentially around the world, were because of stigma, a lack of understanding, and a deficiency of healthcare professionals that women were not being helped and that rates of pediatric AIDS and pediatric HIV transmission would continue to be very high. So I fell in love with the program and um, upon returning to London with my wife, um, we decided that we would get out of the life we had in London, move to Cape Town and that I would join Mothers to Mothers. Thank you very much for providing us with that background. That's very interesting. Um, there are many types of organizations working in international development. And for any students who have taken a global health and social entrepreneurship course at Middlebury, we've learned that Mothers to Mothers is also a social enterprise. And I was wondering if you could tell us what makes an organization a social enterprise? That's a very good question. And I think if I go back to the description I just gave for how the founder decided to um, set up Mothers to Mothers, you'll see that Mothers to Mothers is a perfect example of a social enterprise. Dr. Besser saw that he was dealing with a very large set of problems that affected women across Sub-Saharan Africa. And the solution he hit upon to employ women as community health workers and educators was one that it could apply across all countries. So that is the definition of a social enterprise and a social entrepreneur. It's someone who breaks down a problem that is intractable within a system and develops a scalable, replicable, and sustainable model to address that problem. And that is the definition of social entrepreneurship. Wonderful, thank you. And also Mothers to Mothers, as you mentioned, is an organization significantly focused on community health. And I was wondering what other types of key players and organizations did you work with and the Mothers to Mothers team work with when you were there? That's also a great question. At the time that I spent with Mothers to Mothers in Cape Town, we worked with a very broad range of different international development actors. These ranged from um, other not-for-profits or for-profit healthcare um, organizations delivering health programming 
at countrywide levels or very specific levels. It ranged to the bilateral and multilateral policy community. And by that, I mean organizations like the Global Fund or UNICEF, and also with bilateral and multilateral funding organizations. A perfect example of a bilateral funding organization is the US Agency for International Development, or USAID, which is the largest donor to Mothers to Mothers, or the Global Fund, which is multilateral, i.e. it is a member organization funded by many countries around the world. And then Mothers to Mothers also worked with um, uh, foundation donors and individual donors. But what was interesting about our program is that our focus was relatively narrow. We focused on preventing mother to child transmission of HIV. And over time that broadened to encompass a, um, a more maternal and reproductive health uh, approach to HIV. But even so, there are huge organizations that address healthcare at a national level across all diseases or across um, primary, secondary, and tertiary healthcare services. And Mothers to Mothers worked with all of these different types of organizations. Thank you. And what did you most enjoy about working at Mothers to Mothers? Um, other than the fact that I was working with really dynamic and really interesting people, the most important thing um, at, at the head office, the most important thing about my time at Mothers to Mothers was the mentor mothers and the women they were working with in the clinics um, and in the communities. And any time in any country we worked that I asked a mentor mother what made her go to work every day she would talk about her clients and how after enrolling in our program, they would say, now I am healthy and I have hope for my future and my baby tested negative for HIV. And that got me up every single day. And that is the culture of Mothers to Mothers. It's almost an inverted pyramid in that the organization is driven by the women we employ and the women they serve. And it's, not unique, but it's not that common in the world of international public health to have an organization that is at the kind of scale that Mothers to Mothers is, but that is also of, by, and for the community that it is serving. And that was fantastic. That was made it such a pleasure to work for Mothers to Mothers. Thank you. That certainly sounds extremely rewarding. Um, yes. what were there any challenges that the organization faced during your time there? And what skills and experience did you bring to the team that you think helped mothers to mothers overcome these challenges? Did your role change a lot at Mothers to Mothers? I think it's in the nature of working for a small startup organization that grows very, very quickly which is the case for mothers to mothers over the time that I work there, that there will be many challenges. And it's also inherent in the nature of an organization like that, that people at my level, part of the management team will have to do everything. And I was very fortunate in that my career at JP Morgan exposed me to and gave me a toolkit um, across a wide range of skills um, from financial planning, strategic planning, understanding accounting, doing sales and fundraising and managing donor relationships to supporting the financial team and understanding how to read contracts and negotiate legal contracts. And I would have to say that over the 12 years that I was at Mothers to Mothers, I relied on all of those skills. I generally worked very close to the CEO and um, for different times, I was responsible for our global fundraising efforts, our donor relationship management efforts. And I was also responsible during a time when we received a large grant to expo expand our reach for business development. And business development in this world means going and meeting with ministries of health, and policy agencies and donors uh, in different countries 
to sell the benefit of the program we were running. Um, we were fortunate in that the program many times sold itself. And some of the international policy agencies like UNICEF really loved Mothers to Mothers work and worked with us to convince ministries of health to adopt our model. But part of that work was also trying to ensure the sustainability of our model. And for us, that meant that working under a three or a five year contract in a country and then leaving was never good enough. And we worked to have an end goal of handing over our model to the ministries of health in the countries where we worked. So while we were delivering services, we were always trying to also franchise or divest of our work to the Ministry of Health and to provide the ministry with ongoing technical support and training to ensure the quality of the rollout of our model by the ministry. Thank you. So those were, those were some of the more interesting jobs that I had at Mothers to Mothers. Thank you very much. Um, that sounds very interesting. And as you just explained, you played an instrumental role in expanding Mothers to Mothers operations to several countries. Would you be able to ex explain what it was like to work with so many different communities and perhaps where your background differed from the individuals with whom you were working with? How did you adapt and learn from the individuals where you were working that allowed you to fulfill and succeed at your role at Mothers to Mothers? That's a really interesting question. And um, if we talk about careers in international develop, we'll come back to this. I think what's really important is that, um, first of all, to acknowledge that I'm a person of great privilege. Uh, I am a white American male. I was working in sub-Saharan Africa for an organization dedicated to women's health. And I was always extremely mindful and cognizant of that, um, of that situation. I think the world of international development is full of failures. Failures due to um, the short-term contractual nature of much of the work that is funded by international donors like USAID or the Global Fund also in the nature of um, the management and support for international development organizations, which largely comes out of the United States or Western Europe and comes with it, let's face it, a, uh, the legacy of colonial attitudes towards global health. I think what made my time at Mothers to Mothers successful and what made our approach to the work that we were doing successful is that we were extremely mindful of these things. As I said before, we were trying to bake our model into existing Ministry of Health structures to ensure some kind of sustainability for our program in the event that our funding ended in any country. So, we were very focused not only on delivering services, but also systems building and building systems that would outlast us. Um, this can be very difficult in countries where the public health system is weaker or underfunded or under-resourced. But remember, Mothers to Mothers is, is um, supporting and promoting the employment of lay healthcare workers. And so we also believe very strongly that our model would be a long-term solution to addressing the human resource challenges that ministries of health face across Sub-Saharan Africa. We're not the, other, the only organization that had this view, Partners in Health um, also about the time we started was promoting and before us was promoting lay healthcare workers professionalized, paid, lay healthcare workers as a solution to the human resource deficiency across health systems. So um, I think um, our approach also included spending a lot of time listening, consulting, and engaging in the needs and the wants of the countries in which we were working. We didn't come with preconceived ideas of what the country needed. 
our role was very simple and very basic. Our solution was very simple, basic, and cost-effective. And so convincing a ministry that it was an approach that they might adopt and ultimately adopt entirely wasn't always difficult. But I think the most important thing about what we did and how we did it was we always made sure that we engaged in a very deep consultative process with the government and all the local stakeholders down to the women we were serving when we approached a new country. And I think that ensured our success and differentiated organizations like Mothers to Mothers or Partners in Health from some of the larger, um, more contract focused organizations that work in international development. And I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this. Thank you. And for students considering careers in global health and international development, are there any particular skill sets, education or work experience perhaps they could be focusing on at the moment? The normal pathway or the typical pathway for a college graduate to a career in international development usually involves working for one of the large international healthcare providers. Um, and then going back to graduate school for a master's in public health, um, a master's in public administration, or a medical degree, nursing degree, midwifery degree. Um, I think the, the pathway is relatively straightforward. My pathway was very different, and, and I was fortunate to have that possibility. Um, and to be able to do the work that I did at Mothers to Mothers. Um, Mothers to Mothers never employed anyone like me in the client-facing work we did. I was donor-facing and government-facing in virtually all of the work that I did. And I think one thing that students looking for a career in international development or global health must be mindful of is the cultural change that I've spoken of, where it may no longer be necessary nor even possibly appropriate for a student from the United States or for Western Europe to be engaged in client surface, client facing healthcare work in countries in Sub-Saharan Africa or in countries um, elsewhere in the world. And this um, is just something to, for students to be mindful of as they think about what they want to do and how they want to do it. Thank you for that advice for students watching this video. Now, please could you describe your decision to come back to Middlebury as a professor of global health and social entrepreneurship and leave Mothers to Mothers a couple years ago? Sure. Um, 12 years is a long term, long, long time to work for any organization. And I worked at Mothers to Mothers in many different roles through good times and tough times. Um, and it was possibly, you know, it, it was the most rewarding job I've ever had. Um, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, back in 2012, um, Middlebury College um, announced that they were starting up programs to support social entrepreneurship and uh, opened a center for social entrepreneurship with uh, Professor John Isham and Elizabeth Robinson and a number of other people. And because I was working at Mothers to Mothers, which is an award-winning social enterprise, I was very excited about this. And I wrote to Elizabeth and to John and asked if there was anything I could do. And in uh, June, 2014, they invited me to come back and to speak at the June Forum. Uh, at Breadloaf. And in January 2015, they asked if I would come and get involved with Midcore uh, as a mentor and as a guest lecturer. And uh, that was the beginning of many years of me coming back to Middlebury every January and once over the summer to be a lecturer and a mentor for Midcore. And I loved it. And at one point, maybe two years before I came back, um, I was asked if I would be interested in teaching at the college uh, as a professor of the practice. 
And um, this coincided with uh, conversations I was having my, with my wife about our children coming to the United States to go to college and a possible move back to the US. And that's how it happened. And so I've been teaching in the foundation course for global health, for the global health minor at Middlebury. And I've been teaching an elective that I call social entrepreneurship and global health, where we look at organizations like Mothers to Mothers. And most of the organizations we're looking at deliver community healthcare services uh, the way Mothers to Mothers does. And uh, uh, as an alumna of that class, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I learned a, a, an immense amount. Thank you. You're welcome. And at the moment, some students and recent graduates may be facing greater levels of uncertainty regarding their educational futures and career choices. Were there any times of uncertainty throughout your own professional life? And do you have any advice for students on perhaps overcoming and learning from these times of uncertainty? Yes. Um, if you recall at the beginning of our conversation, I talked about wanting to join the State Department. Um, and I had visions of a long career in international policy and development through the State Department. And then, of course, I didn't pass the exam and had to pivot. And I think the best advice that I can give students, um, and obviously um, this time with COVID-19 and all the uncertainties around uh, the pandemic, um, I recognize the fact that things are much tougher. But I would say that um, my advice to students would be to always be open to alternatives and to be as adaptable as possible. There are many different pathways to fulfillment in the job world. And your idea of a perfect job at a perfect organization may never happen. Um, there are many different ways to find fulfillment. And I think keeping an open mind about that is um, really important. I also think that it's really important, no matter what career you pursue, to cultivate and gather a team of mentors in your life and to rely on them as sounding boards and as advisors throughout your career, whether it was at Chase or JP Morgan or Mothers to Mothers, or even now as a professor, there are people who I trust, who I rely on, and who give me advice about my decisions with respect to my career. And that's one of the most valuable things um, I can advise students to begin to do from now. Thank you. Those are all the questions that I have for today. Is there anything you would like to add before we end? Um, only that I would, I love the mentorship role that I play as a professor and in the work that I do um, with the Center for Careers and Internships. And I welcome um, uh, outreach from any student or recent graduate or otherwise um, who wants to talk about the different career paths that I have chosen. Um, I'm always happy to help. Thank you very much for joining us today, Professor Torres. Thank you very much, Elisa Isabella, and good luck with medical school.